Come I have found a ghost, a donna rosa. Mi vottara soffia senza casa. Io c'ha ya ritura di cilla casa. Se no schettava resta la garu. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Say it, 
said, what do you know? Just a matter of a present he promised to bring her from Palermo. Uh, present? A beautiful necklace, yes. Uh, with pendants? Well, you're no woman! You're a devil! Write out the complaint, madam. No, no. Better. God. Idiot. Uh, no, no. It's better that Inspector Spanor comes here. He's on our side. He owes everything to my dear late father. He'll tell me what to do. In fact, you, Sarah Jenner, can go and get him. Oh, madam! Please! Think of a scandal! Oh, I don't give a damn! <sighs> You'll ruin yourself, madam! I'll free myself! Free! Free! Off you go, Sarah Jenner. Let's not waste any more time. Oh, one moment! Turns to the office, the other man turns his back and goes off of his own accord. Who? Champ? You're mad! Do you want my lady to believe that Champa knows everything and says nothing? Shut up! You know nothing! Oh, take care! You're making a big mistake! Oh, why? Because it will be a big firework display! Bang, bang! Oh, come off it! Look, he sees his wife with splendid earrings, four rings on her fingers, and then tomorrow, a beautiful necklace with pendants. And he thinks, oh, she's bought these things for herself out of her savings. Come off it. Now everybody knows that when the master is in the office, Champa is always out in the street, nose in the air, wandering around. Under orders. The gentleman's always out on errands, that's why they keep him. But everyone knows that each time he leaves the office, he bolts and bars the door to his room. Sure. And the master has a key. But he puts the big padlock on. Sure, and the master unlocks it. Oh, for God, they shut up. I thought you'd get out of mind your own business. We'll get you up out of the way. I'll send him off this very evening. In fact, you, Father, come here. Now, don't you dare let on that I trust you. Madam, you stab me to the heart. I held you in my arms when you were a baby, and you questioned my truth. There now, don't <laughs> cry. But you have your brother and a mother. Why don't you confide in them, your own flesh and blood? They won't let you down. That's enough, I said. I don't want to hear any more. Oh, go and get your mother straight away. And you, Sarah Jenner, get Inspector Spanor. Ask him to remind the park <clears throat> to come here. <clears throat> Let's do it the other way around. Send her to fetch Spanor. Do you know I'll him? deal with Chum. Do you know how to find him, Spanor? If Madam tells me to. Oh, Madam. Don't think this will turn into a great tragedy. Do you need her? Her, her ladyship needs to teach the master a little lesson. That's all. Hmm. Look, four years ago, I chased my husband out of doors with a sound kicking. Now he follows me around like a little puppy and never strays, except when I turn my eyes on him like this. <gasps> then he's all of a tremble. A lesson then. It's fun to see they go off with their tail between their legs. So, Madam is firm. We're agreed. We'll give them until... Firm, firm, like her work. Until tomorrow. Tomorrow. Then I kiss your hand, and away to fetch child before you. <laughs> Maybe it's my brother. If it is, don't say a word. I won't say a thing. Don't worry. I made him come on purpose to arrange for Champa's departure. There was no need. The fewer people involved, the, the better. Even Fana is one too many. Oh, Fana can be trusted. Don't you worry. Leave my brother to me. I've had an idea. You. Your servant. Here. I was about to leave. Yes. Off you go. We'll agree then. I'll be expecting Chapa. Oh, he shall be with you directly. Oh, your servant. 
Are you having dealings with that hag? Me? No. <clears throat> She's doing something for me. Oh, you don't know that the lady can't receive that creature without damaging her reputation? Yes, because she knows all about the dirty tricks that you men get up to. And you're afraid she'll tell your wives and mothers. Great. Go on thinking like that and I know where you'll end up. Oh, I know exactly where I'll end up. Don't you worry. As far as all you are concerned, I should sit here quietly in the dark, knowing nothing about what goes on. You are full of poison. For everyone. Have you brought them up? Yes. That's why we're talking like this. Remember what you said when you needed the money. Please, little sister, help me. Oh, you're always so good and kind. Please save me. I've been gambling. I've lost. Think of the dishonor. Well, you know so well that I was forced to resort to this hag that no lady could receive that damaging a reputation. I did it for you. I sent it to Palermo for earrings and a bracelet behind my husband's back. So you got ahead of that? Give it to me. Is that all of it? There's a little missing. Oh, oh I knew it. How much? Oh, if only you could have waited. Not long, just a couple of weeks. I don't understand. Why the hurry? I want the earrings and brace back here by tomorrow. Maybe your husband has suspected something. Doesn't he return tomorrow? Exactly, because he comes back here tomorrow. And you have to display all of your finding on your husband's return? Too right. I must give him a real welcome. Oh, you'll see. What? Is there much missing? Oh, here you go. I'm not sure. You count it. I think that's three 100 lira notes. I have 50. No, I have 50 missing. Well, as I said, if only you'd wait. Never mind. I'll make up the difference. You can go now. Mm. Charles is here. Can you come in? Show him in. Oh, but wait. First, come here. Can you go through that told you? To the inspectors? Tell him to come here. If I'm straight away, then wait in the study. Yes, my friend. Take it easy, go and be quick. I'll get my shawl and go. What the hell are you up to? Why all this mystery? Jump and see, I'll be quiet. Madam, I kiss your hat. Dear sir, madam, I am yours to command. <laughs> Always mine to command, aren't you, dear gentlemen? As you say, and often like Christ on the cross. Although, in this case, unless I'm deceived, yours to command means that I am your humble servant. You a servant? Oh, we're all masters here, dear Jumper. Oh, you, Fifi here, my husband, me, your wife, <clears throat> for all I know. My mother, Fana, all equal, and maybe I don't even know them anyway. Oh, well, that's heresy, madam. What are you saying? Oh, let her have her say. It was all women, according to her. Ha <laughs> ha not all women. Only certain women. There are those who know how to uh, sweet talk you men, how to flatter you, like. Now, those ones stand above the others, even if they come from the street. Excuse me, uh, madam, you happen to mention my wife. Oh, I was generalizing. Fire, my mother, me, your wife. All women? All equal. Mm. Excuse me, and you too, dear sir, but I feel my wife, even if it's only a general discussion, uh, shouldn't really come into it. She's as out of place as Pilate in the Creed. I'm at your service. That is understood, but my wife is perfectly well looked after and in her own home. It's my duty to ensure she's not talked about, either for or against. And you're so jealous, you can't even bear to have a mention. My goodness. <laughs> it's a principle with me, madam. Hmm? Wives, sardines, anchovies. Sardines and anchovies in a jar. Wife. Under lock and key, and here is the key. That's a fine principle for my sister, each to his own sir. As if locking the door. The window didn't remain open. Mm, that might well be, madam, but it's the husband's duty to lock the door. Ah, oh, really? I never thought of 
Won't you be such a tyrant? <laughs> Me? A tyrant? <laughs> Why? I just like things to be clear. Uh, this is uh, the window. Look out of it by all means, but make sure no one comes up to me and says, oh, Champa, your wife's going to break her neck jumping down from there. Does this make me a tyrant? Hmm? A husband recognises that a lady likes to take a bit of air at the window. The woman knows that the husband has to lock the door. That's all. Uh, what instructions do you have for me, madam? I'm sorry, Fifi. I have something to discuss with you. Like me to leave, just to tell him to... Do you want me to say it? Why not? Speak freely. I've paid what I owe. Well, I suppose so. Listen, Jumper, I need you. <laughs> and I know I can trust you. You're more than a member of the family. And I'm grateful. <laughs> well, I'm more than devoted to you all. I know that, and I'm grateful for that. And everything else. Hmm. I must warn you, I'm not that slow on the uptake. Mm. I have a feeling, the way you're talking this morning, as if you've been eating lemons. Lemons? Honey! I had honey for breakfast today. Anyway, you were saying... Oh, God, it's not the words I'm talking about. We're not children. You're trying to say something the words aren't. What? What do you mean? I appeal to you, sir. What does it, she mean when she says I'm more than a family member? I reply... I'm devoted to you all. And she comes back with, ah, for the devotion and everything else. What is this everything else? What does she mean when she says we're all masters here, without distinction? Even my wife, I don't have a guilty conscience. But she's trying to get at me. Why? Well, it's not just at you, it's at everyone. It's a serious business. <laughs> what have I said? That's so terrible. Can't I speak anymore? No, it's not that, madam. Shall I tell you what it is? The instrument is out of tune. The instrument? What is it? Ah, what I call the social spring. I must point out that we all possess three watch springs, as it were, in our heads. One serious, one social, and one insane. We need the social spring above all because we are social animals. That's why it's right in the middle of our forehead. Without it, we devour each other like mad dogs. Hmm. That wouldn't do. I gobble you up, for example. So, what do I do? I wind up the social spring, approach him all smiles, hand extended. How nice to see you, my dear sir. You understand, madam? Then comes the moment where the waters get muddy, and what do I do? I give a turn to the serious spring to clear things up, state my reasons plainly, as I must. And if that doesn't work, I let rip with the mad spring, lose my head, and then all hell breaks loose. Excellent. Then. Brother Chanter, <laughs> you, madam, if I may say, must have given a good wine to either the serious or the mad spring, and now it's buzzing in your head like a swarm of hornets. But in the meantime, you wish to talk to me through the social spring, and what happens? The words belong to the social spring, and they're out of tune. Am I making myself clear? Shut it off. Madam, ask your brother to leave. I beg you, sir. Will you go? Why? Let him stay. Do you want to deny me the pleasure of listening to you? Because you, you, madam, if I may, here on your right temple, should wind up the serious spring and have a private talk with me for your good and mine. But I am being serious, and I want to serious talk too. Good then. Here I am. Uh, be aware, though, madam, I'll just say this, that anyone who fails to wind up the serious spring in time might well wind up the mad spring, and in others, too. I'm warning you. I have a feeling it's you who's out of tune now, dear Champa. Hmm, I think so, too. Hmm, I felt it for some time. I don't understand. Excuse me, sir. My father had his forehead split open. What's your father got to do with it? When he was a youngster, my father, rather foolishly, instead of protecting his forehead when he stumbled and fell, always preferred to save 
his hands. He instinctively put his hands behind his back and fell flat on his face. Now I, dear sir, when I fall, keep my hands out in front. And I do that because I want my forehead free of all marks and encumbrances. That's all very well, but if you don't know why my sister called you here, why put your hands out in front? I'm shutting off the serious spring and opening the social. Madam, I am yours to command. I'd like you to leave for Palermo tonight. Uh, for Palermo? Uh, how so? The master returns tomorrow. Oh, well, does he need you the moment he returns? Of course! Why else should he keep me in the office? Oh, well, I know he pays you to go out the safe, and you get a lodging in the next room for that. <laughs> Just for that? Oh, you mustn't belittle what I do, madam. I also write. Can't you see the pen behind his ear? Uh, it's my bad job office. The publican has a vine leaf and bottle at the door. I am a clerk, and so a pen. Clerk and journalist. Oh, don't mention the journalism. That's just a hobby I do in my spare time. I write for my employer. Keep ledgers. Attend to business. We don't mess about in the office. Mm. I'm not just a bystander. Has your husband ever complained about me? What? My husband complained? You won't hear a word said against you. And you want me to go to Palermo? Oh, why not? I see no harm in it. And if I tell my husband I sent you, can't I give you an errand too? Oh, an errand? I'm always at your service, madam. You're the mistress here. For me, dear sir, take your walk around the streets of a great city like Palermo. Oh, it's life itself. The blood tingles in my veins. My ideas start to flow. Oh, if only I'd been born in some great mainland city. Who knows what I'd be now? An academic. A member of Parliament. A minister. A king, perhaps. Let's not exaggerate. <laughs> We're all just puppets. The divine spark enters us and the puppet starts to move. I'm a puppet. You're one. We all are. It should be enough for us to be born puppets by divine decree. But no, because everyone wants to be a puppet on their own terms. The puppet they believe themselves to be. And then the rows start. Because, madam, every puppet wants to be respected, not just so much for what it believes itself to be, but for the role it plays out there. Secretly, no one is happy with their role. If our puppet stood in front of us, we'd spit in its face. But from others, it wants respect. For example, you're a wife, aren't you? <clears throat> yes, a wife. At the least. Oh, I can see from your response that you're not happy. Uh, but nonetheless, as a wife, you want to be respected, true? Oh, I don't just want it. I demand it. And God help those who deny it. <laughs> and so you see, it's as I said. Everybody is the same. If you, you, my esteemed employer, Mr. Fiorica, as a good friend, you'd probably both be happy. The war is between two puppets, the husband puppet and the wife puppet. Indoors, they tear each other's hair and eyes out, but in the open, they walk arm in arm, social spring for him, her, and everyone else they meet, making way for them here and there, smiling, hat raising, bowing, and the two puppets bask, glowing with pride and satisfaction. <laughs> You're quite a character, dear Champion. You really are. This is life, sir. Keeping the respect of others, madam. Holding your puppet, whatever it's like, on high, so that everyone raises their hand. Am I making myself clear? But let's come back to our business. What must I do in Palermo? In Palermo? We can't, Beatrice. Oh, yes. Uh, I thought I heard Simon coming back. Has her. Madam changed her mind? I, I did nothing. Where did I put the money? Over there, on that table. Oh, yes. yes, here it is. Hmm. Here are 350 lira, Champa. And what must I do with this? Wait. I'll go and get the extra 150. I'm in there. And the two tickets. On. Bear in mind, sir, that he is my employer. 
can speak quite openly. I've given my sister back the money. And she wants to ask me back home by tomorrow. Tomorrow? And what excuse will she find for sending me away just as the master returns? <laughs> Women always find an excuse. But in all the time the master's been away, couldn't she have sent me away sometime before this without him knowing? Yes, but to be truthful, I've only just returned the money. Mm. Sir, there's something fishy going on here. Your sister's up to something. Yes. Even to me, she seemed a bit. But what do you expect? It's the same old story. Jealousy. And she's sending me away to Palermo. Here I am. Here I am. What's happened to you? What's happened to me? I don't know. You seem... Oh, it's nothing. I couldn't find the tickets and it upset me. And here they are. And here is the other hundred. Very well, but has Madame thought about what she's going to tell the master when he returns and sees that I am missing? I thought of everything. This is for your fare, plus 150. Well, well, all those banknotes. Yes, sir, but we have all these hundred notes. So what? What are you talking about? It's my own money set aside. When we have all these hundred notes, go on. Oh, it's nothing, madam. I only meant to say that with these you can enjoy pulling up puppet strings and sending him to Palermo. I'm not doing it for my pleasure. You know why I'm sending you. But now, with this extra 150, I want you to buy. And this time, just for my pleasure, a necklace. A beautiful necklace. With pendants. <laughs> Me? A necklace? With pendants, mind. I'll tell my husband. I saw one worn by a friend of mine and really liked it. Just a moment. My husband will understand. <laughs> I beg your pardon, madam, but what do I know of a buying a... Uh... Oh, well, it doesn't matter if you couldn't find her. Just tell me when you get back. Well, then, you can keep this money. What do I need it for? Because it would give me pleasure if you could find one. I want one just the same and bought by you, dear child. By me? Why? What do you want from me, madam? The same as what? I don't know what it looks like. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, if you go to our jeweler Mercurio, I know my friend's necklace was bought from him. If you go there, you'll find it. Are you going straight off? <laughs> I'm stunned. Dumbfounded. <laughs> Seems like a pretty good excuse to me. Not bad at all. The best surprise I could give my husband when he sees me tomorrow in that necklace up. Uh, there's a train leaving soon, at six. There's still an hour to go. Uh, I only need two minutes, enough to lock up the office and bolt and bar the door to my room, and then straight off. Uh, but I would like the hour uh, to be used by a madam. By me? Mm. For reflection, for thinking things over. No. What should I think about? Come on, Chamber, I'll go with you. Goodbye, Beatrice. Uh, remember, madam, my father, who drew back his hands. Let's be off. <clears throat> oh, uh, madam, uh, would you like me to bring my wife here? Your wife? Here? Oh, that's all we need. <clears throat> For my own uh, peace of mind. Oh, oh, be off with you. Oh, are you, are you mad? What should I do with your wife? Here. It's true, you, uh, a lady, but uh, for my peace of mind. But you lock her up in line with your ideas and put a bar on as well, mm. don't you? And to padlock, I'll bring the keys to you. There's no need. Take the keys with you. No, no. If Madam won't have her here, then the least she can do is take the keys. I won't budge on this. All right. Bring them then. Don't waste any more time. Let's go, sir. Uh, Madam. Uh, with pendants, you say? Yes, yes, with pendants. I kiss your hands. Inspector, Inspector, come in, come in, at last. I'm astonished, as if struck by lightning, a crash of lightning right at my feet. We haven't got time for small talk, Inspector. We need to work out what to do. Imagine he wanted to bring my wife here. Him. Here. Uh, his wife. What better proof do we need? That's what it's come to. 
Calm down, madam. Please be calm. How can I be calm when I want to teach him a lesson in front of the whole town? Yes. Well, and the consequences, madam? Have you thought about those? No, that I should leave him, you mean. <laughs> I'm quite ready. But amicably, no. I'll shame him, and then we'll split up. Nobody must say it's my fault. Everybody has to see what this respectable gentleman really is. I want a logical lady, you are a perfect official, and can't refuse me. Uh, certainly, madam. If you lodge the complaint. Uh, I'll do it right now. Tell me how, and I'll do it. No, no, that's not possible. Uh, shall I tell you how it's done? Uh, well, you do want to help me, Mr. Baker, don't you? Of course I want to help, madam, but remember, I'm a family friend. But you should be on the side of justice! Yes, madam, it is my duty to look neither left nor right, head held high even before God himself. But for the memory of your late sainted father, like a father to me too, how he loved me, how many things he taught me. So you see, madam, in this too, these little sins of the flesh, hardly mortal ones, Little sins, are they? Is that what you call them? We can call them digressions, if you like. I speak as a friend. Oh, his friend, you mean? Oh, no, madam, yours as well. Diversions, I like that. Diversions. And this is justice. And that's how you help a poor, weak woman who can't defend herself. I want to look. The complaint itself is easy, madam. It's the investigations that take the effort, the delicate, the fraught with difficulty. You have to study the lie of the land secretly. Oh, God, you need a clues, proof. Do you know Sarah Taylor? She's one of our informants. Mm -hmm. Well, all the better. Send for her and she'll give you chapter and verse. Madam, I've already talked to her. We are always one step ahead, believe me. Two doors are involved. One, into the gentleman's office. The other, on the opposite side, into the two rooms next to the office, where Chamber lives. And there's a door in the middle, as well, between the office and Chamber's rooms. That's right, isn't it? Uh, yeah. And Chamber locks it from the office, on this side, with bar and padlock. So, what happens when you raid the place with offices on both sides? Those inside don't open up, even if God knocks on the door. Except that they've locked this middle door, so that one is on one side, and one's on the other. And so, can't you do anything? Here we learn the art of successful policing. You can do something. Now, if you have the office key, for example... I forgot it. Jumper's bringing it to me now before he goes. I'm expecting him. But Jumper, he's bringing... You, the key. Yes, without me even asking for it. He wants me to have it at all costs. I didn't want it. I don't understand. No, it must mean that you can be sure Champa suspects nothing. Nothing at all. What are you talking about? Why would he want to please my hero? Because, God, well, in the town everyone knows, madam. That, that I'm jealous, right? And with the excuse that I, he is jealous. I'm jealous. He's always said just what he wants. But I'll show people if I'm right to be jealous. You say that with a key, it's all easy now. But you can open up the office door before there's the time to shut it. Me? Open the office door? Yes, and then what happens? You think your husband is stupid enough to go to the woman without locking the office door? You have barred it as well. How do I open the door that's barred from the inside? Well, first I shout out, Open up! In the name of the law! Give a warning, and then break down the door. Meanwhile, your husband will have plenty of time to lock the middle door.
bar and padlock it as well. It's no good now. If that's all there was to policing, I'd be the happiest inspector on the force. Oh God. So what happens now? What happens? The gentleman arrives at ten, I believe. We'll plant a man in the office cupboard half an hour beforehand, at half past nine. We'll catch them in the act. Brilliant, Inspector, brilliant. And now have me back to complaint. It's so Oh, that would be jail for bringing me the key. Let me go in there. Oh, in the act, you see. The act. May I come in? Come in, come in, Jumper. What's this? Madam, I brought my wife. And you can take her right back again this minute. Can I speak, madam? I don't want to hear it. Away with you now. Don't even look at her. But madam, my wife is clean, modest. She can be as clean as you like, and modest. What shall I do with her? Oh, I'm amazed you should come here, even with your husband. Madam, my husband ordered me to. Excellent! Well, you could have saved yourself the trouble. I clearly told your husband not to bring you here. But I wasn't to know that, madam. Hmm, just so! Oh, you trained her well, then. No, madam. She's speaking quietly, modestly, the truth, as she should. Don't you want her? I thought I'd made it abundantly clear. But you could keep her in the kitchen or in the coal cellar or make her sleep under the range with a cat. Are you trying to push me over the edge? Don't make me say things that should be left unsaid. Yes, madam, say them, say them, if only you would. I told you to go, and that's that. Very well. You don't want her. That's clear. I brought her here, and you won't have her. Quite clear. Here are the keys. I'm leaving. But remember, I'm in your hands now, madam. Wait, Nina. Social spring activated. A little curtsy. Her eyes averted. And then straight home. Your servant. Superb. If madam would care to open. I'm opening nothing. Then keep it all tight shut. Bring it here now, just as it is. I want to be out of here before this evening, away from this damned place. Oh, Madam, come on, who is it? Well, go and open up. If it's the inspector, let him in. But tell him to wait a little while. I can't just think about this. duty to come and warn me. Where is she? Beatrice! Beatrice! Oh, mother. Beatrice! Oh, what have you done? You're ruined. But she did it all by herself, without listening to anyone. I told her over and over again. Could you speak up for me, madam? Please. I told her, go to your brother. He's a man. Ask your mother for advice. Now, you turn this whole place upside down. They arrested him, the master. Her mother of God. And her as well, Charles' wife, too. Oh, both of them. Great news. Oh, just for life. What are you saying? Shame. Scandal. Oh, that's right. The scandal. And the shame. His shame. And yours, you mad woman. What do you think this insanity has gained you? Free! You are out of your mind! 
Free to hide in my house without showing your face in public again. That's freedom. I have no status. I don't care. As long as I don't have to see him again. I was getting ready to go. I've been packing since last night. Don't you forget I was here yesterday. Was it that witch I saw you talking with here? Yes, yes, that's right, sir. That's the one. Which one? Sarah Taylor, madam. Oh, my good Beatrice, how could you? To have dealings with a creature like that? Did you suspect nothing? I never thought she'd go that far. They sent me to call Inspector Spanner. Spanner? Inspector Spanner. Did you say How could you? Inspector Spanner. So, Spanner. The man your father made allowed you to go through with this without advising you against it? So innocent mother, he can't have believed his luck when he saw the chance to put one over his betters. Don't you understand? Oh God, to think I've lived to see such shame heaped on the women of this family. Well, you've always been known as a paragon of prudence, madam. Never a word out of place. Oh, but I've seen things, father, you know that. The world's not what it was, though. Calm down, Mother. Don't take it too much to heart or I don't know what I'll do. She wanted this mess, now let her get out of it. Oh, Brighton, have you forgotten that she's my daughter and your sister? What a thing to say! Has she only just remembered she's my sister? I was here yesterday. What can we do? Let me take her home with us. She can't stay here with her husband. Who wants to stay here? Oh. Who can that be? I'm not afraid of anyone. Go and open the door. I'm here. Oh, come with me. Please, sir. I'm on the track. Both of you, go into the next room. And you, answer the door with no fuss. Come. Come on, Beatrice. Ah. It's you, Inspector. Always at your service, sir. Fine service you've done us. The whole family should be grateful to you. You hurt me, sir. Do I now? Is this the way to treat a family who did so much for you? That's why I say you're hurting me. Especially as I'm a public official. Thank you so much. And don't I know it? Am I speaking to a friend? You came here... Summoned by the lady. Be that as it may. And accepted a written complaint. Accepted? Wait, I'm cut to the quick. First of all, I did all I could to stop her. And the lady... But where is she? She can tell you. I did all I could. Well, you might have checked with me first. The complaint had been signed. What could I do? Try to make her withdraw it. Then all I can say is, you don't know your own sister. For God's sake, she threatened to go directly to the commissioner and tell him that I refused to... Ah, here she is. Dear lady, let me kiss your precious hands. You, madam, tell your brother that... It's no use, Inspector. It's useless to go on pretending. And anyway, the Inspector is right. You see? I was responsible. No one else. What did I tell you? The gospel truth, that is. How can you hold me responsible, sir? Or you? Dear lady, but I worship you like my own mother. You see what I'm abused to? I'm crying. Yes. Crying because I was wrong. It was through excessive friendship. You can't imagine how hard it is for me to carry out my stinking no. duties. Excuse my language, madam. In this town of ours. Forgive me, but how could I possibly arrest Mr. Fiorica myself? So what did I do? I made it even worse. Blame me for that, sir, if you must. I still don't know what the hell you've done. What? Tell me. Well, the fact is, as I couldn't possibly make the arrest myself, I gave the task to someone else. My colleague, Logato. He's a stranger here from Calabria. And what did he do? The idiot! I arrested both of them, my brother-in-law and the woman. So he did his duty. He acted as he had to. Be quiet, bitches. You don't know what you're saying. So. Did he find them together? Tell me. 
Well, yes and no. Together and not, not quite in the act. And that's something. In fact, I'd say that based on the evidence we have, nothing was wrong. Nothing at all. So why were they arrested? Why? Because I wasn't there, that's why. Because that nitwit from Calabria was in charge. But the gentleman will be released, sir, tonight. I promise and swear to you, or my name is not Alfio Spanon. You'd better tell me the whole story. All right, then, it was this way. Lugato, using Madame's key, entered the gentleman's office and hid in the cubbyhole near the hall. When the officers knocked on Champ's door, asking to be let in, in the name of the law, and so on, uh, the gentleman, when the woman went to open up, made to open the middle door to the office. So you see, he was there in Champ's room. He'd open the middle door. Yes, madam. And how could he, be, how could he have opened it? If Champ had locked it and brought me the key, the proof is all there. No, madam, that's not proof. You see, there are... The English locks with two keys. Sorry, two keys. One for Chava, the other in my husband's car. Can I go on? In his statement, the gentleman said that having come from Catania and expecting to find Chava, and also Dusty from his journey, I can sympathize with him there, and in a great hurry to see his correspondence, his very words, he knocked, he said, at Chava's door, in order to wash his hands. Yes, his hands, the poor man. He had to open his Can letters. Pay no attention to her. Go on. Well, that's when she, Champ's wife, that is, uh, slipped him the other key under the door. Fancy oh, that. Under the door. How convenient. And it was proved, madam, that the key was passed under the door. And the gentleman was in shirt sleeves, decently dressed. Oh, yes. And her. How was she dressed? Well, now. Well... She was... Say it! Say it! It's in the deposition, isn't it? Well, I can definitely tell you she wasn't wearing a blouse. Oh, oh, naked! Was she naked? Of course not. What are you implying? I, I meant she was wearing more than just a blouse. A skirt and a blouse. I, uh, you know, the sort of clothes women wear in the house. Of, women of the people, that is. At this time of year, in this heat. I was fine myself. But she was properly dressed, I can assure you. A slightly plunging neckline, maybe. A summer blouse, that is. <sighs> so long as they didn't find their stark neck. I forbid you to speak like that. Is that my daughter talking? Shame on you, in front of a man. <laughs> you call that a man? Beatrice! Well, let's all pretend then. Let's pretend it never happened. Sweep it under the carpet. Oh, the shame! Even talking about it. Look what you're doing. I don't understand, Inspector. Why were they arrested if there were no grounds? Uh, I'm coming to that. Uh, the woman was arrested due to her uh, excessively plunging neckline, if you get my meaning. As for the gentleman, well, the moment they laid hands on him, he lost control. Furious. If I'd been there, I'd have overlooked it. Even if he'd slapped me, I'd have taken it. Out of friendship. But that Calabrian idiot put his foot down and arrested him for resistance. He'll be released, sir, tonight. And if Legato can't keep his mouth shut, I'll fix him. So, no offence was committed? Nothing at all. A thorough search was made even of the gentleman's case and jacket. Oh, the jacket, eh? And the case? Oh, tell me, did they, by any chance, find a necklace? The pendants? The one he promised to buy from the left? Would that be why you wanted Champa to get you an identical one? Yes. Tell me, did you find one? Excuse me, madam, but who mentioned such a necklace to you? La Saracena? That's her! She's the one! Mm. I know all about it. She mentioned it to me, and it's pure idiocy. This is how it started. Champa's wife is always bickering with her neighbours, who make fun of her because of all the rings she wears. Well, she boasted that one of these days she'd appear on the balcony, got up like the Madonna, wearing a great necklace with pendants. I make them all die of envy. That's it. You know what we did find in the gentleman's case? A prayer book, bound in ivory-tinted leather, with gilt pages. You see, Beatrice, it was meant for you. Oh, wait, uh, 
that's not all. We also found, oh, a box of candied almonds. <laughs> Your favourite! So I said you treated it like a queen. You ungrateful <laughs> wretch. <laughs> Might be wise, sir, if your sister were elsewhere than her husband is tonight. An excellent idea! We'll take her home with us. For a few days at least, but we must sympathize with the poor man who's threatening no end of mischief. He's right, quite right. I don't know what I'd do in this place. Look at her, you'll see. A few days and everything will come back to normal. Isn't domestic peace a wonderful thing? So too. Computers. We need to make their own devices. You, where do you think you're going? Answer the door. Don't be afraid. I'm here. She can't talk to you right now. Talk! There's no more left to talk about after what's been done. What's been done might not be what you think. The statements weren't incriminating. Not at all. They're straight from the horse's mouth. You've no reason to be upset. I have your word. My word? It's the legal document that says so, Chapa. You see. Well, if the document says so, that's it. There are no foundations for any of it. And the document carries legal authority. Will you take the inspector's word? Oh, very well. I have something to deliver to your sister. Ah, yes, the things you collected from Palermo. You can give them to me. Very well. Uh, but wouldn't it be better, as the inspectors here, that I leave them with him? With him or with me, it's the same. A few items the Champa redeemed. Fine, fine, fine. You can even leave them on that table. Why do you give so much weight to a verbal deposition? The verbal deposition is a statement of fact, as the inspector explained. Precisely, it's legally binding. Oh. Fine. I want the following statement to carry legal weight also, that I hereby deliver to the inspector, having been sent by the mistress. I know that. Oh, you do, do you? I was sent away on a particular errand. I want you to take note of the fact that I, a humble servant, went and returned, having discharged my duty and delivered the two items to you. One, two, that's all. What are you doing now? Nothing. I'm leaving. Just like that. What else can I do here? I wanted to speak to your sister. It seems I can't, so I'm going. What have you got to say to my sister? What's the matter? Got a sore throat? Breathing problems, maybe? For your information, I've got eyes on the back of my head. Are you afraid that if I speak to your sister... Why should I be afraid? My sister, as I said, <coughs> can't talk to you right now. The inspector, my mother in the room with her, and I myself. Make her see the folly of her ways. She's sorry she acted as she did, Champa. Isn't that so? It is. In floods of tears. Oh. Floods of tears, you see. Yes. She's crying because I, the inspector can confirm it, gave her a piece of my mind. Right enough. A real avenging angel. Oh, I can tell you, Champa, you couldn't tell her off more than I did. <laughs> and what should I say to a lady? Huh? All your sister did was take my name, my puppet, you remember I was talking about puppets yesterday, took my own puppet and threw it to the ground and stamped on it like this! And why? Because she, the poor...
who are popping felt trodden underfoot as well. Her, her positions, hers and mine, are more or less the same. What could I say to her? I only wanted to ask her one question, and not really of her, but of her conscience. What question? The question with the address to her conscience. Inspector, search me! Oh, don't be absurd. You know you're a gentleman, Champa. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Inspector. Very glad. Seeing me here as my heart breaks and I weep tears of blood. Yes, blood. Because I've been assassinated. What are you saying? There's no need for that. Please control yourself, Champa. I'll control myself. But can I put just one question to the lady? Oh, of course. I'll call her. Beatrice, Mama! Beatrice, come here! Champ is here and wants to ask you a question. You poor man! Are you hurt? Oh, it's nothing. <laughs> the problem is my glasses. I broke them. My vision is blurred. But by now, there's nothing left for me to see. One question only. Do you believe, and we'll leave aside everything that happened this morning, do you believe in all conscience that you were right in acting as you did, despite the fact that yesterday, in your brother's presence... Yes, yes, we know everything, my good man! You brought your wife here. Please allow, allow her to answer the question. It's possible the lady wished to injure me as well, thinking she had every right to do so. Can you answer me, madam, truthfully? No, I... With you, um... She meant you no harm, Champa. In fact, she meant to keep you out of it by sending you to Palermo. Yes, yes, just as the inspector says. Uh, no, madam, it's not possible you didn't include me yesterday in this room for two hours. I put my hands well forward. Yes, yes, that's just why I sent you to Palermo. To have a free hand to deal with your wife and my husband. Without thinking of me. Without thinking of you. And what was I then? Nothing. Something you picked up between two fingers and tossed into the corner like an old rag? Well, I want to let it all out now, madam, and look into the depths of your conscience and say that you did mean to hurt me as well. And why? Because according to you, I knew everything and kept quiet. Am I right? Answer me. Am I right? Well, since you say it yourself, yes, that's how it was. And so if a man is blind, you stick a sight to his back saying, look, everybody, he's blind. No, that's got nothing to do with it. Well, OK, let's leave the blind man then, because everyone can see what he is without a notice. You must prove to me that one, only one person in the whole town could suspect me of knowing what you believe I know and come up to me and say to my face, Champa, you're a cuckold. And you know it? No, never, no one. Who could think such a thing? What are you saying, Champa? No one can say that. Honestly. What? what? But she could always say that even if the others didn't know. I did. And that would be enough. Is it true? Don't deny it. It is. Never mind what the verbal declaration says. I'm asking you, madam. Is it true? Yes, it is. Oh, madam. Well, I'm going to speak now, but not about myself, in general terms. How can you know why a man steals or kills? Because that man, who might be old, ugly, poor, maybe loves a woman who holds his heart in a tight grip like a vice, but he won't cry out because she can end his suffering suddenly with a kiss. And the old man goes mad, drunk with joy. How can you know how much the poor man suffers, how cruel his torture is, even to the point where he agrees to share the woman's love with another man, someone rich, young, handsome, especially if she acknowledges he's still the master and nobody will notice the arrangement. I'm generalising, madam. I'm not talking about myself. Oh, it's a... 
festering wound I'm talking about. Shameful, but cleverly concealed. And what do you do? Stretch out your hand and uncover it for all to see. But let's come back to our business, madam. I knew that you suspected my wife and your husband of jealousy. Who hasn't felt it? If you really love someone, I sympathise even with criminals. How could I not sympathise with your jealousy? I came here yesterday just to get you to talk about it. Get it off your chest. If you had your suspicions, I couldn't do anything about it. Because I knew the more you try and root them out, the sturdier they grow. If you'd used the serious spring with me yesterday, I'd have gone straight home to my wife and said, Pack up, we're leaving. Today, I'd have gone to your husband and said, Sir, I kiss your hand, and here is my resignation. But why, dear Champa? Because I can't stay with you any longer. I have other things to do. That's how it's done, madam. Why do you think I brought my wife here yesterday? To get you to explode and let out all the anger in you. I begged you to talk, speak. Speak, I said, but nothing. You tossed me aside and murdered me. Well, what am I supposed to do now? Huh? You tell me what I've got to do. Wear the scar with pride, buy myself a cat with two horns and parade around the town so the children can follow me through the streets, screaming, ma ha 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 And there I am, smiling. Thanking them, left and right. What? A cat? Children? Nothing has happened, I'm telling you. Absolutely nothing. Well, because the verbal deposition says so. Who will believe any of that after the scandal? Police raids, arrests. Everything's been explained. So, Inspector, there's a great deal of mud here, and a lot will stick. You'll see. He's an important fellow. They fixed it up among themselves. What about me? You could have had the pleasure, madam, of teaching your husband a lesson if you thought he was having an affair with a girl. A girl with no father or brothers to breathe down her neck and cry, VENGEANCE! Everything could have been done neatly. But someone else was involved. Me! And you ignored that completely. Was I nothing? Well, you've all had your little diversion. The town's had a good laugh, and tomorrow you'll make up with your husband. What about me? I'm left with a verbal deposition that says nothing unusual happened, and from tomorrow onwards, everyone will be coming up to me looking concerned. <gasps> oh, Champa, nothing's happened. Mrs. Fiorica was just joking. Inspector, search me. Feel my pulse. What for? Feel my pulse. Tell me if it's beating faster than normal. I'm calm and relaxed. You're all witnesses to this. But I'm telling you that either tonight or tomorrow, as soon as my wife gets home, I'll split her head open with an axe. And she won't be the only one. Oh, because if that were all, the lady here would be delighted. I'll do the same for the master as well. It's only fair. What are you saying? You're mad. You're not killing anyone. Both of them. I've no choice. I didn't no. start this. You're not killing anyone you've no reason or right to. And if you try, we'll be here to stop you. I am here. Oh, Inspector, you may be able to stop me today. And tomorrow. But the day after tomorrow, I'll kill them. You know what we say here in Sicily. Woe betide the man who's dead in another's heart. You're a witness, Inspector, that I never wanted any of this. I can't walk around with a scar on my forehead for all to see. But if I tell you, Champa, there's no reason oh. for any of us. Oh. No, you tell me, madam. Now you see you shouldn't have put a man through this. 
Too late, I'm afraid. She told you herself that nothing has happened. You call that nothing, sir. You shouldn't say that to me. But if the whole scandal was just over a moment of madness. Is she a madness? It's just madness. The lady admits it. She told you herself it's madness. It's madness. 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 That's what it was. Oh, thank you. Dear God. Beautiful. Wonderful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all can be resolved peacefully. Oh, what a relief. I could dance, jump around. <laughs> what a relief. What a weight off my chest. My hands can stay clean. And I kiss them. <laughs> Madam, you go and get ready. Right, sir. Me? What? <laughs> Do as I say, please. Go and get ready. Let's not waste time. <gasps> You'll be in time. Why? Where am I going? What do you mean? Where is she supposed to go? She'll make it. She'll be in time. Uh, Fana and uh, uh, you too, madam, uh, go and help her pack. But hurry, please. We've no time to lose. Why? Where am I going? Oh, have you heard that? Me? No, madam. But you are. Everyone's agreed. Mr. Fifi, the inspector, even your mother, that you're mad. You are mad and must go to the madhouse. It's quite simple. Are you saying? What do you mean? To the mad. <clears throat> to the mad. To the mad. <clears throat> it's you who's going to the madhouse. Out of here. Get out of my house. Now. Oh, but madam, it's for your own good. What do you mean, saying things like this? What is going on? Oh, you too, sir. Don't you see that this is the only solution for your own good and for the master's, for everybody's? <laughs> Don't you see that the lady has shamed the master as well and must make amends before the whole town? You'll see. She's mad. Everything explains. That way I have nothing to avenge. Disarm, I'll say. She's mad. Nothing to be done about that, is there? <laughs> Mad as a march hare. Uh, the master will have nothing to be embarrassed about when he meets his friends tomorrow and the lady takes a free month holiday. Come on, come on, it's the best we can do, but she must leave this evening. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. Don't you see? It's all make believe. Me? Me to the madhouse? Oh, do you hear this, mother? <laughs> to the madhouse? It's for the best, dear. Yes, madam. For the best. I think it's the best solution, too. Think of your husband, madam. Who are you talking about? Why would you be so mad, Papa? Ah, but madam, haven't you shamed and branded three people before the whole town? One as an adulterer, one as a whore, another as a cuckold. You say it was just a moment of madness. That's not enough. You must be sure that you're mad, really mad, mad enough to be locked up. Oh, you're the one who should be locked out. No, madam, you. We're all agreed here that you are mad. The town must know it as well. Uh, it's easy to be mad. Don't be alarmed, madam. Uh, shall I show you how? It's enough to go around telling everyone the truth. Nobody will believe you and they'll all think you're mad. So you know I was right and I had a reason to do this? No, no! Turn over the page, madam, and if you do, you'll realise there is no greater madness than to think you're right. Come on, have the pleasure of being really mad for three months at least. It seems a simple thing. Oh, if only I could be in the way I want. Let the mad spring unwind. Cram the cap and bells of madness down over my ears, and then into the square to spit my truth in everybody's face. We'd live for a hundred, two hundred years. It's the bitter pills, injustice, violence, bullying we have to swallow that poison us, not to be able to let it all out, not to open the valve of madness, but 
You can, madam. Thanks be to God, you'll live for an extra hundred years. And now, start to shout. We shout. Mm, yes, right here, in your brother's face, in the inspector's face, in my face. And now, as only a mad woman can, you enjoy shouting this in my face. Ha, ha, ha. 